Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on Solomon's Temple. My name is Solomon Izang Shams. It's so great to be with you at this time of the day. Thank you for watching on YouTube. It's uh it's amazing to be able to have you guys come in and out and all that kind of stuff. And thank you for everyone who's watching uh, from around the world for your comments, for your uh support. I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel, please. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, there are other great videos. Don't miss those videos that are sitting right there that you can actually go and, and, and watch, you know, uh, quite a lot of it. I'm sure you're going to find something interesting uh, right in there. But, but thank you so much uh, to uh, my brother here says, good day, Uncle Solomon. Thank you so much uh, for 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 showing up and thank you so much for everyone. Thank you even for Takalani. Takalani is saying, ha, ha, ha. Yes, we're going to talk about, <laughs> about, about, uh, um, Shepard Bushiri, um, M shades all the way from Etswatini. He's saying, hello, Malume. And I hope you guys are doing well in Etswatini. Zinande, thank you. You always here. Uh, good to be with you. Good to be with you from Brits Kanye. Good, so good to have you here. Um, Rigobert, thank you so much. Uh, Lucas, also from live from Soweto. Uh, from Sekunda, thank you. Sikororo, thank you. All the way from New York, Josette, uh, from Nigeria, Glad World, Charming Rose from Virginia in the us uh from botswana from the netherlands and tabi saying thank you and tabi um from botswana also gartner uh thank you guys appreciate each and every one of you uh for tuning in please i want to recommend that you please subscribe to this youtube channel thank you wanjiru um <laughs> Thank you. She says she loved the wisdom that I share. Yeah. Yeah. I always love to look at things from a different perspective. You know, you ask questions, you do some, some sort of like critical thinking uh, into issues. Uh, and that's what is important. So, um, it's, um, I want to encourage you guys, please subscribe to the YouTube channel right away. And also, like I said, like I've been saying the last few days please if you are watching any of my uh videos and an advert comes on please do not skip it allow it to roll allow it to just play it's just about 15 seconds just so a lot of people uh just so a lot of people would be able to watch it also via our relationship with youtube because youtube would see that oh wow these viewers the people that uh that follow this channel, you know, they are, they are committed, they're diligent, they watch much more. That way it's going to be able to help out. So please make sure that you do that. Uh, yes. Thank you, all the guys from Namibia also. I see you from Sierra Leone. Caroline from the Congo. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. So I'm going to just quickly talk about a new book, Bushiri's new book. So Bushiri, as we know, I don't. He needs no introduction. He's a fugitive. He ran away from South Africa to his home country in Malawi because of a lot of charges, you know, money that that people lost in an investment that encouraged them to get involved. Over six million uh, U.S. dollars. Uh, there are other charges that are that are all high plopped against him. So he he ran away. Uh, so since he ran away, he's been trying to broadcast. Uh, he's been broadcasting from Malawi. So he built in this studio. You know, all, since all this pandemic started, a lot of these charlatans and all these celebrity pass to build this studio, you know, like in a studio, and then you have screens all over. And people who log into Zoom, they get to beam their photos, their videos all over. So you have this room that everything is just so, some sort of like, you know, videos all over, you know. So it became quite a bit fancy. Quite a lot of them are actually using it right now. It's become like the style. And I think it was a trend that was actually set up by T.B. Joshua. T.B. Joshua was a trendsetter, to be honest with you, when it comes to uh, media 
and videos and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the blind people cannot see it, but us who are not blind, we could watch his videos and like, hey, this guy is actually a joke, you know? Uh, so Bushiri actually did that because Bushiri, after he left South Africa, he left tens of thousands of followers here, or maybe even hundreds of thousands of followers in South Africa, you know? Because in his church, every week you get like maybe 20,000 people coming. And he has built branches around the country. He called them home cells. So all of a sudden, now within the space of two months, you have, you know, things just changed and you were arrested and you went to, you were in prison and then you got bailed and then you, you ran away and you left all of this behind. So he needed to keep in touch with the people. And South Africa offered him a great platform because of the, some sort of first wall infrastructure and the gullible people and all that, that followed him, gave him a good platform to create what he wanted to create, you know, which he could not do in Malawi. But now that he's in Malawi and he has used South Africa to reach out to people in the US, people in Malaysia, people in across Africa, in Nigeria, Kenya and all that, he needs to try to maintain it. So what he's been trying to do whilst in Malawi is to try to maintain it visually, you know, using those videos, you know, they have this meeting, they have that meeting, they have that meeting and people will plug in. And I think one of the major ways that he's trying to also keep people is through this new book that he wrote. Then the title of the book is called The Jesus Nation. Now, Bushiri should be the last person that should even mention the name of Jesus. It's, a, it's hypocrisy for Bushiri to mention the name of Jesus. It's total hypocrisy. For somebody who aided the defraud, <clears throat> that, you know, <clears throat> he aided a system that defrauded so many people, for somebody that ran away with people's money, for somebody that was very immoral, sexually immoral, you know, but for him to write a book and title the book, The Jesus Nation, is just, for me, it's a, it's a top level hypocrisy. But I feel he's writing this book because now he's out of South Africa. He needs to maintain the network that he had built. So he needs to be releasing and using certain different elements and campaigns to be able to maintain this network just so they would still be attached to him and still be talking about him, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, Bushiri's new book, like I said, is titled The Jesus Nation. And the book is actually right now on Amazon. So this is the book in itself. Now available on Amazon, hard copies only. So there's no soft copy. Uh, and you buy hard copy. Obviously, he knows his target. He knows his target audience. He knows that 70, 80% of his people, if he puts the soft copy there, uh, they're not going to be able to buy it. So just do hard copy. Because a lot, a lot of his followers are Africans. And remember also, hard copies are more expensive than, than soft copies. So that's another way to make money. So the book, outside of being a project for him to maintain his network and keep influencing these people that have been following him, it's another way for him to create money, to keep making money. Because now he has to think like really diligent and make money because the money is not coming in the way that it used to. When he was in South Africa, the money was coming in right, le left, right, and center. But now he has to be able to make sure he creates different, more and effective way of uh, you know, streams of income. So this is the book. And is like I said, the book is currently on Amazon. This is the book here on Amazon, The Jesus Nation, A Chosen People, A Chosen Kingdom. A paperback, uh, the book is 18 dollars 18 dollars for the book it's paperback so obviously uh hard copy uh the, the 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 bag the cover is soft it's not like the real hard thick uh, cover but if you look at the title of the book the jesus nation 
you see, Bushiri is a, is very good with words. In using words to manipulate and deceive the people. So you use the word. Obviously, you know your people would want to affiliate themselves with anything Jesus. Anything Jesus. Anything Emmanuel. You see, like uh, TB Joshua's station, Emmanuel TV. Ah, Emmanuel, God with us. <laughs> so these guys are smart where when they pick something to put it out there, they intentionally do it in a way that people are going to receive it as the truth in a way that people are just going to easily embrace it. Because the content of the book, if I was to retitle it, I would, based on the content, I wouldn't give it this, this title. We're going to look at the content a little bit. I haven't seen the book. I haven't read the book, but I've followed some of the reviews around the book. So what really got me interested in the book was a manipulative marketing strategy that they put out, I think via WhatsApp and via some of the media in Malawi, uh, because he doesn't get some sort of traction around the media in South Africa anymore, uh, in tele you know, in, on Telegram and all that kind of stuff. And this is what they said, right? This is what Bushiri said himself. Amazon hot new releases. So they said the new releases in Christ Christian discipleship. So they said, wow, in just two days, the Jesus Nation book has already ranked number one on Amazon's new releases, Christian discipleship books. I'm so glad and proud of all of you. If you don't have a copy yet, just click the link below and order yours. So they're still trying to sell the copy. They're still trying to sell the books. So this is not just it, right? What they had said was also was actually that over 100,000 copies have been sold already. <laughs> over 100,000 copies have been sold already. Do you know what it means to sell hard copies, like 100,000, in just a space of, what, 12, 14, or 21 days? Not even sure there was any sort of like pre-order. And then we have this kind of situation. So these are all marketing manipulations saying, no, we've sold over 100 copies already. Have you, do you have your own copy? You need to get your own copy. You haven't gotten your own copy. So they will get people to take a photo with their copy uh, from all around Africa or wherever they are, and they send it to them, and then they keep telling people, wow, they just bought this copy. Wow, these guys in Denmark just bought their own copies. Wow, these guys in Norway. Wow, these guys in Nigeria. Have you, have you bought your own copy? You need to buy your own copy. So they're pushing it. So technically, any 10 copies he sold, he sells, rather, is a... Uh, it's $1,800. So 100 copies is about 18... 100 copies is about what? $18,000, isn't it? Am I correct? No? It's about $1,800, rather. That's 100 copies. $1,800, yes. So... What we have seen him create is to draw people in. Let, let me take you into the book a little bit. So just a little bit details around the book. The, 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 the book, you know, is about, is uh, 367 pages. Uh, it's in English. And the publication date is the 17th of uh, June. That's when it was published. So now from the 17th of June and today is what? Today is the... Eight, they have sold over a hundred thousand copies already. <laughs> uh, these guys, they're just playing with the, the minds of the gullible. So here's the description of the book, right? 
In this latest book, they said Shepherd Bushiri unveils a current reality that every Christian is supposed to be accustomed to. God is building a nation that he has called the Jesus nation. And the sole mandate of this nation is to establish Jesus Christ as the ultimate ruler of all the earth before his second return. Shepard Bushiri takes on the mission of explaining how you can be part of this nation, recognize it, and even benefit from it. He desires that his book, this, this book will act as an inner compass that will direct you to the fulfillment of your highest purpose in the body of Christ as both steward and custodian in the Jesus nation. Whether you are a new or old believer or wondering whether there is a, a great success in being a mentee in the prophetic, this book is unset for your season. So you see, he plays around with words, even bringing about the, 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 the mentee, the prophetic, uh, uh, you fulfilling your highest purpose. Uh, and also there's a place where he, yeah, recognize and even benefit from it, being part of the Jesus nation and all that. Bushiro is the last person that should be talking about these things because he's, he, he always has an ulterior motive behind the scene. He always has, has that motive. Now, here are some of the stuff about the, 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 that I research and also uh, about the book. The book is basically talking about what I was actually taught in school, you know, 20 years ago, uh, you know, in university, where they're talking about the, the seven, the eight or the seven mountains. But I was taught from it about the seven domains. You know, how you look at society, then you break society into the different domains. There's a domain of science and technology. There's a domain of education. There's the domain of the church. There's a domain of arts and entertainment. There's a domain of health. Uh, or, you know, it falls under science and technology. There's the domain of economics. There's the don that there's, that's also business and everything falls under it. There is a domain of what? There's about seven of them, right? And saying, how, what is the mandate that God has given us when we are in these domains? Because the church is just one of the domains. You see, some people feel until they become pastors, they're not really serving God. Until they give to church, they're not really serving God. Until they do this to church. But church is just one of the many <clears throat> ways that God wants us to, to bring his kingdom here. If you are a business person, how are you bringing God's kingdom there as a business person? If you are a teacher in the education, education domain, how are you bringing the kingdom of God in education as a teacher, as an educator, as someone who is in science and technology, maybe you're a doctor, you are a nurse, right? Maybe you're into IT. How are you bringing the kingdom of God? There are different ways to bring the kingdom of God in these places, either through excellence, through creating something that is new, new innovation that will solve problems, that would help people, and all that kind of stuff. But you see, with Shepherd, it's about trying to get people to think that way, not taking them deep, and then drawing them now towards him, just so they could give, just so he would be a beneficiary. That's why you see him. Tancredi and all that. They will set up this billionaires, be billionaires club, or how to be a billionaire. All these, the passion Java and all these guys, how to be a billionaire. You know, you need to attend the workshop, you know, uh, investment workshop where you pay, you know, five, hundred pounds or so, you know, for you to be able, they will teach you how to be a good investor, how you can turn your money into millions in a short while. That's not the way to go at all. So people that will fall for this camp, they will, you will just fall for very low level 
marketing strategy that this guy's brother came up with just to defraud you, to manipulate you, and to make money from you. The book is just another stream of income. Remember, after he left South Africa, a lot of his streams of income was cut off. A lot of the people who used to support him and go to his church every Sunday, every Monday, prophetic night or whatever, they cannot go there anymore. And even before he was arrested, remember, there was the, the lockdown and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, it put a lot of strain on him. Put a lot of strain on him. Bushiri knows how to play with people. He, he's, he, has a, he has human wisdom. Like a high level human wisdom with an additional firepower from his covenants that he made in Ghana and all these places where he needs to service some God, but not the almighty God, not the Jesus that he is titling this book on. That's Bushiri for you. Have you had pastors who write books and then they will tell you that, oh, well, the church doesn't even pay me. You know, I don't take a salary from the church and all that. <laughs> Excuse me. The fact that you don't take the salary from the church, but when you write a book, but you know, within the, without the church, you would not be invited to speak in other places because the church gives you the platform for you to be known. Step away from the church, pastor in the church, and see if they're going to invite you as much as they did. You'll say, no, I don't take a salary from the church and this and that, you know. But when you write a book, you use the social media of the church to promote and sell your book. When you write a book, you use the, TVs, the TV programs that is being paid by the church to promote your books. When you write a book, the radio programs that you promote and push and sell your book, you know, you use the radio station, the radio programs of the church. When you write a book and come in front of the church and say, look, hey guys, I just wrote a book and this and all that. Everybody must buy it, give it to everybody and all that. You're using the platform of the church to do that. So all these guys that would say, I do not take a salary from the church. You know, I make my own money and all that. I just make money through my books and all that. But you use the, you use the platform of the church to market your book. You should actually be giving and paying 10% of, what, of every book that you sell. You should be giving that money to the church for giving you the platform, for using their platform. That's how it works. <laughs> That's how it works. If you keep following Papa, Papa, no, Bushiri wrote, wrote this book. They will, he will tell you that if you buy this book, this book is going to change your life. If you buy this book, you're going to walk in the prophetic. If you buy this book and you read this book, your business would transform once, you know, one, you know, just one time your business would turn. If you get this book and you read this book, you no, know, whatever area that you're into, God is going to bless you. You're going to experience a promotion. You're going to experience this and you're going to experience all that kind of stuff. Marketing strategy. Marketing strategy after marketing strategy. Magahal Gore and DA. I want to appreciate you. You just uh, contributed uh, 50, 50 pound, fifty dollars uh, towards the work that we do. Uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. You just did that through uh, the super sticker. Uh, please make sure if you want to do that via super sticker, uh, go ahead and do it there. So we need to ask questions if there's anything one of the mandate that god gave me is say solomon i want you to provoke people not necessarily to provoke them to anger but by asking the hard questions ask the hard has the questions nobody is asking say the things nobody is saying So we need to be 
to see beyond what is before us, we need to look a bit more deeper. We need to look a bit more deeper. That's the right thing to do. Bushiri has, it's a, it's a high level hypocrisy for me, to be honest with you, to see someone like Bushiri writing a book like this and then calling it the Jesus Nation. It is a high level hypocrisy. And you see, these guys do not feel any bit of hypocrisy because their conscience has been smeared. Their conscience has been defiled. So they are not working in the spirit. So what do I expect from them? So I'm not shocked when they when these charlatans and, and false prophets do all these things. I'm not shocked at all. And you would see, he would keep creating different strategies. Once this lockdown goes down a little bit, you would see he would begin to see how he can invite people to Malawi. Right now he's raving that he has even, that him being in Malawi, that has improved the economy of Malawi already. That's what Bushiri is saying right now. The people that are trooping in every week from outside of Malawi coming in with hard currency to spend because they come to be with him, to visit him. All that is another form of trying to get people in. So, so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, you're probably going to see it out there, but to, to take note of it. Uh, uh, Ramare Ramaredi is saying, Yazi, you, that's, uh, you tried Uncle Soul, but these charlatans are mushrooming in all angles. Some recycle themselves and come in new and different ways to continue fooling people of God. It's sad, hey? Yes, it's sad. He's spreading his <laughs> witchcraft. Yeah, we got uh, uh, Jonita from Nebraska. Thank you. We got quite a lot of uh, people from the US. Thank you, Sub and Sub Suboniso uh, from Los Angeles and also from the state of Texas, Elna. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. So I just want to encourage you guys again. Uh, there's been some comment here. Uh, Kamo is saying the problem is people don't want to be saved. They love their papa. That's correct. Uh, Lungisa is saying most pastors write books and they make a lot of money out of it. EGT, the Jake's Rip, Lodola, Kenny Copeland, Joel Austin, Benny Hinn. Kanye says, isn't the Bible the compass and the purpose and fulfillment what Christianity is about? Yes, indeed. Rich is saying only gullible members can buy such satanic books. Rato says they are good in marketing these people, Uncle Saul. They are very, very good in marketing. Pudi says it's only his Mumu followers who is going to buy the book. So when you say Mumu in Nigeria, you say it's more like you're foolish or fool. Yeah, so here is Bring, did the calculation. So what they are trying to say is if they have sold over 100 thousand copies already that means he has made over 1.8 million dollars 
So technically, Bushiri is telling us that within from the 20, when, when was the big, when was the book published again? Let's look at it again. Uh, the book was published on the, was published on the 17th, on the 17th of June. So between then and now, it's about what? Three weeks. He has sold over 100,000 copies. So if he has sold over 100,000 copies at 18 pound, $18 rather for a copy, so he has made close to $2 million. <laughs> First, I don't believe that over 100,000 copies have been sold. That's just another marketing lie to get people to think, ah, me, uh, why? I need a copy too. You know, people are buying because people want to buy what is popular. Once you tell people that something has been is very popular and everybody is buying it, they want to buy it too. Wanting to use from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Martha says people should go back to the basics, their Bible, study their Bible on their own with the guidance from the true biblical teachers who guide them in true undiluted doctrine. Very true. I agree with you. Uh, Doc Koru is praying for me, saying, Uncle Solomon, may God preserve your going out and your coming in. They shall surely gather, not by me, says the Lord. Whoever shall gather together for your sake, Solomon will fall and I will fall. In the name of Thank you. So just wanted to share that with you guys, guys. So please share this uh, with other people and also make sure you subscribe. And again, I want to uh, re-emphasize that anytime you watch any of my videos, all the videos that are in my YouTube channel, please go there, watch the videos. Anytime you watch an ad, ad, a video and there's an ad advert that comes on, please don't press, don't click on, on, on skip. Watch the video, you know, watch, the full advert. It's just about 15, 20 seconds. That way, YouTube is gonna know that you know the people on this channel, the viewers are watching the videos to a certain extent, and they would begin to place the video in certain places and give it certain uh, preference. So please make sure you do that. Uh, and I'm I'm sure uh, that that's gonna go a long way in really helping. So thank you so much. God bless you. And uh, tomorrow I will be coming to speak about TB Joshua's laying in state. So TB Joshua officially been brought out and put out in public for people to queue and see him for the very last time. Uh, he was put in a glass sort of like a cubicle uh, or what? Yeah, some sort of cubicle or coffin. His coffin is like transparent. His casket and so people could see but i'm going to analyze certain things that i see uh there already uh tomorrow so thank you so much may god bless you and keep you may you continue to shine for jesus amen <laughs>